pray. Lord, we come uh, come before you this morning to worship. We come before you for our own reasons, reasons which you know, needs which you see. Meet us in truth. Draw us closer to you. Help us to receive you, to live well. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please be seated. Well, good morning again. Are y'all awake? Good morning again. I had a cup of coffee before this service. So the rain some, does something, something strange to us. It's, this is supposedly a true story. Uh, two four-year-olds are talking about heaven um, at Sunday school. And the Sunday school teacher overhears. The four-year-old girl says to the four-year-old boy that she didn't want to go to heaven. The boy says, why don't you want to go to heaven? She says, well, I'm scared of heights. I'm afraid I'll fall out of the sky. The little boy says, oh, silly. If you go to heaven, you won't fall out of the sky. Everybody knows you'll be nailed to a cross. <laughs> I like that story as well. And sometimes we, like that four-year-old, will really think we got it figured out, don't we? But we think we got the answers. I, I like that story. Our gospel reading today is a teaching about the different ways we respond to the truth of God in our lives. Different ways we respond to God's word, the truth of God in our lives. And Jesus gives us the, the four descriptions of responses people have. And man, most of us are so familiar with this parable. He talks about the path. He talks about the, the rocky soil, the thorny soil, and the good soil. And immediately, most of us, if I think most of us, we began to think, Trying to figure out, but what kind of soil am I? What kind of soil am I? And I know some of us here today, I know you, you think that you're that first kind of soil that never understands nothing. I, I've had parishioners, years ago I had a parishioner that was always talking about this first kind of soil. He complained. He said, I never understand what it is. He said, you know, we have a book, Physics for Dummies, Piano for Dummies. Why not have a Gospel for Dummies, Jesus? Because that's what he needed. If you are that person and you feel like that is the soil you are, I need to tell you that you're wrong. That's not who you are. But maybe the second type of soil, this rocky soil. We, we relate to this rocky soil too, I think. I mean, after all, sometimes we hear a teaching of Jesus or a moving story, a truth about God, and it moves us, can excite us. And sometimes we're bold enough to think, well, that's great. This is going to change me. I'm going to have a faith that I haven't had before. Things are a little different now, but then you go back out into your life and what happens? It just fizzles away in the reality, in the heat of the sun. It doesn't hold up. We know. And it's like we, we're not the kind of the, a person that can change, we think. Maybe we're just the second kind of soil, the rocky soil. If you think you are that kind of soil, you're wrong too. You're not that kind of soil. And the third kind of soil is my favorite. Maybe you, like me, relate to this soil. The soil that, um, this soil, the thorny soil, where we, we, I mean, my faith in my life has, has taken root. It has grown. It's borne fruit. It's changed me in some important ways. And yet, over and over, I find that my, my other life, Outside of my church life, the other part of me, it keeps my heart divided. And over and over, I do things like I prioritize. I do the reasonable thing, right? I prioritize business over love. I prioritize successfulness over faithfulness, financial gain over generosity and freedom. Over and over, it strangles out the good works of God in my life. So I feel like I have got to be this third type of soil. If you're with me, I need to tell you that, like me, you're wrong. That's not the kind of soil you are either. And if you think you're the fourth type, the good type of soil, well, you hadn't been listening, so I'm not even wasting my breath on it. No, if you think you're the good sort of soil, I do beg you to reflect back upon the teachings. Find your brokenness in so just hold that in your mind for a minute. Coming back. All this mess. 
When it comes to reading script, scriptures like this very important teaching, there are really two ways we can read. Two ways we can read just about anything. The first is information. And the second is formation. When we read informational, it's like what we've been taught in school. The goal is to get through, cover as much ground as possible, to glean from it the essence of what it has so that we can gain information, some knowledge for our minds. That is, the, that is informational reading. We're good at this, a lot of us. The second kind is, is very different. It's reading for formation. And in this kind of reading, it is not about finishing anything. It is not about quantity, it is about quality. You may only read a few words, but it is about taking what is written in, taking what is said in, considering it in our hearts and minds, staying with it, questioning it, allowing ourselves to spend time with ideas. This is the sort of patient, reflective reading that not only can inform us, but that can form us. This is the kind of reading which we are called to do when it comes to scriptures in our daily life. Now, informational reading still has its place in our lives. I did informational reading to prepare these words today. But formational reading, that is how we gain what we need from scriptures. For when we come up before a scripture like this, what we need is not something for our heads. Lord knows we have enough stuff for our minds. What we need is some living, real help. We need something to fix this in here, to make a difference. John Wesley loves Psalm 199, 119, as do I, where it says, the Bible, the Bible was meant to be a lamp to your feet, a path, a light to your path. Its purpose to help you live well. So getting back to this parable of Jesus about the soil. The purpose of this teaching is not to tell you what kind of soil you are so that you'll know whether you're the good guy or the bad guy, whether you're saved or not saved. After all, for sure, surely some of you can see what kind of soil you really are. Sort of obvious, isn't it? I think. You're all four types of soil. Depending on where you are, depending on the day, depending on where you are in your faith, your mood, you're all four types of soil. What I'm saying is that, and I mean this in the most loving way, is that what Jesus points out here is that you're all a bunch of dirt bags. That's what Jesus is pointing out. You're not one, you're all of these things mixed together. Heck, I can be all four in a single day. I know I can. And if you don't believe me, I just glanced around this reading. I did a little informational reading and glanced around the three chapters um, surrounding it. And I found at least three great examples of the character of Peter being different types of soil. In the next chapter, Jesus turns to Peter and says, are you so dull that you still don't understand? He's being the first time. When he walks on the water, Peter, you know, he gets out of the boat. Man, what faith. He walks on the water. He sees the waves. He's scared. He begins to sink. It withers. Right? He's being the second, or you can make an argument the third. The, the, when he says, you are the Messiah, and then the next minute, Jesus is calling him Satan. I mean, these stories, Peter was a dirtbag like you and me. It's okay. This is who we are. The purpose of this reading is not to provide you with information about the kind of soil you are. So you can determine whether or not you're saved, chosen by your loving God. No, rather, this is to be a map, a light upon your path, a map for God's lost children, helping you to see, see wherever you are on this day, wherever you are amidst the confusion, however it is that you are responding to the truth of God in your life, this teaching was meant to help, to help you to recognize to see yourself, to know what God knows about you so that you might come to guard against some of these ways in which we respond poorly to the word of God, to the truth. We might guard against the times when we 
when we just don't understand why God would have let this happen to us or to our family. Or we don't understand the teaching that Jesus is talking about. Or that we think that we understand it so perfectly that we just dismiss it. We don't even think we need to hear it anymore. Like the four-year-old saying that you're going to be nailed to a cross. Or other times when we try and hold the two truths of God. Or the two truths of God and, and mammon or whatever it is. And it just strangles the goodness right out of our lives. This... Is who we are. God knows it. He seeks to bless you. By helping you to have a light upon your path. A light upon your path and a lamp for your feet. That you may take in his teachings. Take them in. Wrestle with them. Seeking not for what is easy. But for what is true. Seeking not only for comfort. But for the difficult help that you need in your life. This is the purpose of the scriptures that our Old Testament uh, readings so beautifully describe. That the word of God would not return to God until it had accomplished its purpose. This is the purpose. I did want to mention one question. One question which actually is a common obstacle for us. And I've already mentioned this today. It's a sensitive little bit I wanted to mention. It's a question that does good in our faith and bad. It's the question of, are you saved? That question is an important question, obviously. So don't hear me wrong. But the question of salvation is one of those questions we tend to go back to over and over. For ourselves, and heaven forbid, questioning other salvation. And when we do this, the fear that is just beneath the surface of salvation, that question of salvation... That fear points us to have a self-centered faith. A faith that says, save your own hiney. Right? That is not the direction Christ calls us to live. It is an important question, but this question can harden our hearts. And the point is, I can say a lot about it, and I will later. The point is, is that question, oftentimes, the fear in it will cause us to hear every scripture. As if the point of scripture or to study God is to know about heaven and hell. Which circumvents the true power and blessing of God's Bible and, and his word for your life. It is, a, it is an important, of course, question that can be used for good. But we must be careful. We must be careful when we study scripture to make sure that we hear beyond the question of salvation. Hear beyond it. Do not let it to clog our ears. For the Bible is meant to be a lamp upon a lamp unto your feet and a light upon your path that will bless you, form you in the ways that you need to be formed in this life, not only in the next. My fellow dirtbags, I like that. No matter what you're struggling with, oh God, if you are struggling, and so many of us are, no matter what your struggles are, remember that its purpose, the purpose of the struggle, is to be a blessing. Don't give up because it's hard. Draw it in. Come to see me. This is why I'm, I'm here. See someone you know or trust. For God's blessing does come through his wonderful word. And it comes when you need it most. Amen. Amen.